Big news. AWS has killed the classic free tier account. No more 12 months of unlimited tinkering with free thresholds. Instead, we now have free and paid plans and a lot of people are confused about how these work, especially with the $200 credits that you get with a new account. In this video, I'll break it all down for you. What's changed, who qualifies, and how you can still use these plans to learn AWS and prepare for your certifications. Let's do a quick recap on the old free tier account. That gave you 12 months of free usage with thresholds. For example, 750 hours of a T2 or T3 micro EC2 instance, or 30 gigs of EBS volume, or five gigabits of storage on Amazon S3. Now, as long as you stayed within those limits, your bill was zero. It's perfect for students and professionals because you could spin up accounts freely and practice for your certifications. There were two issues with that old free tier service. One was customer issues, unexpected charges. Many users accidentally exceeded free tier thresholds without realizing it. For example, leaving an EC2 instance running and using more storage than allowed. The result, unexpected AWS builds which could be stressful for students, startups, or learners trying to experiment safely. And then we have AWS's issue, abandoned and abused accounts. Thousands of free tier accounts were abandoned or underutilized, consuming system resources. Some users gamed the system, creating multiple free tier accounts with new emails to get free access repeatedly. This caused operational overhead for AWS and inefficient resource management. So why AWS made the change? The new free and paid plans address both issues. They protect customers from unexpected charges using credit-based limits and auto closure. And they prevent abuse and resource hoarding by validating new accounts against payment methods. So let's take a look at how the free and paid plan actually work. Now, if you happen to have already created your account before July 15, 2025, then the legacy free tier service still applies to you. But if you're creating your account after July 15, 2025, then you need to choose from one of two options, the free plan or the paid plan. New customers, and I stress the fact that it needs to be new customers, can get up to $200 in credits. When you sign up for an account, whether it's free or paid, you're gonna get $100 as part of sign up, but only if you're a new customer. Next, you can get an additional $100 in credit as you explore various services on AWS. But the key difference between the free plan and paid plan are as follows. With the free plan, you get up to a maximum of $200 in credit, it includes free usage of selected services, but you do not incur any charges until you switch to the paid plan. To ensure that you don't incur any charges, certain workload types and scaling are not available as part of the free plan. And if you attempt to use those services, you're basically going to need to upgrade to the paid plan. You also don't have access to all of the AWS services and features, but you do have access to the core services on AWS. With the paid plan, again, you receive up to $200 in credits. It includes free usage of select service. You'll pay for any charges that goes above the credit thresholds. Your workloads can scale beyond those credit thresholds and you have access to all of the AWS services and features. Now to understand this a little bit further, I highly recommend that you go through the FAQ pages. So the FAQ pages gives you a lot more detail about the key differences between the free plan and the paid plan. With the free plan, it only applies to new customers. Whether you're students, entrepreneurs, small business, they're all welcome to sign up. But essentially, you should not have had another account before. And the way to ensure that you are qualified as a new customer is if you're using a brand new credit card and a brand new email address that's never been used before. Now, your free tier credits will expire and they will expire within 12 months from the date that you create the account. Now, bear in mind that the free plan accounts are actually closed down after six months. So what this means is that before they get closed down, you need to upgrade to the paid plan. Any credits that you have not used whilst on the free plan will just be carried over to the paid plan. There's one critical point that I want to highlight over here. If you're studying for the AWS certifications, there are some courses and some certifications that expect you to understand certain critical services like the AWS organization service and the ability to manage multiple accounts and even control tower, which allows you to build landing zones for creating and managing those multiple accounts. If you use your account to create or join an AWS organization or set up AWS control tower, your free tier credits will expire immediately and your account will not be eligible to earn any more free tier credits. Your free account plan will also automatically be upgraded to a paid plan. 
Now here's the thing, if you're preparing for certain certifications like the AW Certified Solutions Architect Associate Program or even the Professional Program, it's vital that you get lots of hands-on experience on various AWS services and technologies. That includes the AWS Organization Service, Control Tower and more. And so one way to work around this is actually to upgrade your free plan account to a paid plan very early on whilst you still have a lot of credits and then that way you can use those credits to pay for any charges that you incur as part of doing all of the labs, exercises and more as you train and prepare for your AWS certification exam. You also cannot transfer your credits to another AWS account and then once you exceed the free usage limit or always free service, your account will begin to incur charges at standard pay-as-you-go rates and obviously you can see all of those charges in your bill. And then the next question is, do you require a payment method to sign up for an account? And the answer is yes, you will need to provide credit card information when you sign up for an account, whether it's free or paid. And that's how AWS also identifies whether you're an existing customer or a new customer. Okay, so the next question that I want to quickly highlight here is under the paid plan accounts. Am I eligible for free tier credits if I select paid plan at sign up? or upgrade to a paid plan within six months of opening my account? And the answer is yes, which is why I was saying earlier that you can start off with a free plan account. You can carry out some of the labs as part of your training before you start learning about AWS organizations and control tower. And if you need to do some of those labs, what you can do is just upgrade your free plan account to a paid plan account, ensure that your remaining credits are moved into the paid plan account, and then you can use those credits against any charges that you use as part of your training. So here's the bottom line. Free plan accounts are designed for short-term limited services and it automatically closes after six months. Paid plan accounts give you full AWS access up to 200 credits for new customers with no time limit. AWS says that this change protects learners from unexpected builds, but it also prevents abuse and cleans up abandoned accounts. For certification preparation, start with the free plan basics and then upgrade to the paid plan to explore more advanced services like AWS organizations, service control policies, and all exam relevant features. I'll see you folks in the next video. Thank you.